going on everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be unboxing the Antec NX200M PC case. This is the black variant, I don't know if there's any other colors, and it's a micro ATX form factor. I have built in this case once before, that video hasn't been edited yet, and I have another build planned for this case in particular. So if you see this unboxing and then two build videos, and one of those build videos says, and I didn't do an unboxing video, well, that's because of the time I had. But the reason I'm building in this case a second time is because one, overall, it was an easy build. Two, the case, again, overall is generally aesthetically pleasing. And three, this case takes care of one of my biggest pet peeves, which if you've watched any of my build videos before, you probably can guess what that is. I hate empty, dead space inside cases. And this one has a fairly precise layout. It allows you to get everything in without too much complication, without a ton of void inside the case, making it just look empty. Before we go any farther, two things to note. I just rolled out of bed and ran to the shop, so my beard might be a little unruly today. And two, I just fired up my first 3D printer for the first time, and I have a test print going right now. The cooling fan is a little audible to me. I'm not sure what's gonna get to the mic. So if there's a humming in the background, sorry, that's what that is. But enough of that, let's dig in. So like I said before, this is a pretty cool case, and if you're looking for a mini ATX build, it's probably the way to go. I bought this case off of Newegg. I don't remember exactly what I spent, but I remember it being reasonable. Sales happen on cases so often that if it's not on sale, if you're not in a rush, wait a couple weeks, it'll probably be on sale again, or check Amazon. Voila. Let's take you on a quick run of the exterior. You have a solid mesh front panel, which I'm not sure how well this will translate on the camera, but it's actually textures, not just a flat plate, which I think is nice. Up top on your I.O. you have power and reset, a couple USB 2s, a USB 3, and separate headphone and mic jacks. We have space for two 120 millimeter fans up top, and as I always like to say, I love it when they are offset towards the glass panel, that way you have room for your cables for your CPU power. You'd be surprised how many cases I've worked with that don't do that. Moving to the side, we have a tempered glass panel, which, by the way, has a magnetic door. And of course, if you need to, it does lift off the hinges. The magnet is fairly secure. You do want to be careful if you are carrying it. But this is great for easy access and cleaning. Four slots on the back. Again, this is a micro ATX board. And our back panel here is flat, no unsightly bulge. Let's swing back around to this side. Throw our door open for a second. You'll notice there is a cutout in the power supply shroud. Now, I am not a power supply snob, so I actually like to have this covered. Some people like to show off their 1,000 watt power supply. I'm not that guy, but anyway, it's there. The power supply is perforated across the top and has two pass-throughs in the back for cables. Something I forgot to mention, this case actually does come with a non-RGB fan, which if you need one, great, you got one. I would recommend adding more fans. And if I'm remembering correctly, I think this is a max five fan system two in the front, two in the top, one in the back. Some people hear that and they scream, oh no, negative pressure. Honestly, I don't think it's that big of a deal. The three to two ratio is not that bad. But if that does worry you, as long as your components are too high end, AKA too hot, you'd probably be fine with two in the front and one in the back. Fun fact, that is not what we'll be doing in our build video. Our motherboard mount has two pass-throughs here for cables and one up at the top as well. Since we're here, let's try this. This part always makes me nervous. <laughs> so there is a lip on the base that you can grab to pull. So make sure you bear hug your case like I did. Now, don't quote me on this, but it looks like there's enough room for you to put your fans in between the front and the case if you wanted to add a radiator. And it looks like we have not only screw mounts for 120, but 140 millimeter fans as well. But again, don't quote me on that. Our plan for this is two 120 millimeter fans in the front, and they're not gonna be mounted here, they're gonna be mounted on the inside. But we need this off to screw it in anyway. Oh, but speaking, you must have room on the front for fans because look, they have pass-throughs for cables right here. So yeah, so that must be by design. Again, that's not my design for this build, but if you were to, yeah, they give you pass-throughs for cables. That's awesome. Let's take a look at this back panel. You know, I'm getting weaker or those manufacturer screws are getting harder. You can hear my wife, you're getting old. But in my opinion, having two kids ages you twice as fast. All right, back panel off, quality warranty. Oh, a little installation step-by-step -step guide. That's nice if you're a first-time builder. A package of screws and accessories. Now this is nice. We do have some depth to the case back here. That's great when you're trying to run cables, especially if you're running RGB fans that have a hub and all of that. This extra space is priceless. 
We have an SSD mount right here on the back. We also have another mount tray down here. So if you're running a full size hard drive, and I think you can even screw another SSD to the top of this. If for some reason you prefer the space, this actually unscrews, you can get rid of that completely if you want. The feet have a decent height and we have a small filter for our power supply. And of course there's all our cables, very standard. Front USB, audio, USB 3, power and whatnot. So the first two sets of standoffs are already screwed in and the third set run here, here, and that's it. So the motherboard can run right up to these pass-throughs. So if you have a radiator in there, uh, you know, just start measuring because things are going to get tight. I've only used two fan cards in here. I'm not sure if a three fan card would fit. So make sure, make sure you check measurements before you go with a three fan card in a case this size. And just to mention, relatively light, but also sturdy. The build quality is solid. One of the things I like about this case is its simplicity, which is why at this point, there's not much more to report. If you're looking for a good clean build and not an excessive size, this is a decent case to go with, which is why I invite you to check out the next one, maybe two videos if I edit that other one. So the other one that I filmed before this one is pretty straightforward, I like it. And I'm just gonna let you know the next one after that is, is pretty dumb. It's a dumb premise. It's not the dumbest build I've ever done. I've done much dumber builds. It's just a dumb premise. My reason behind doing what I'm going to do is there's just no, it's just stupid. There's no, again, it'll be a fine machine, but my reasoning behind it, you know, don't worry about it. Just watch it. It should be nice and humorous. But that's it for this one. I hope to see you in the next video, and the one after that, and the one after that, and the one after that, maybe even the one after that. In between the editing videos, which can take a while, find me on social media. I've been trying to put more out there, YouTube shorts, archiving all the photos of my builds on Facebook, and even throwing the random thing on TikTok. And I have to mention Instagram or my brother will yell at me. Just search Fearless Fragger, look for this guy. There'll be varying stages of beard. So last time, thanks again for watching. I'll see you soon. Bye.